Good, bud. Good, how you been? What you got going? My, my uh, friend wants to kind of figure it out. Yeah. So, what do you think about me claiming the Earth maybe a level non-rotating plane that goes on infinitely forever and ever? Oh, I just like to ask people if they've ever seen the tilt of the Earth from outer space before. I, I can honestly say no. <laughs> no, I haven't either, right? So, how do you know that this is what causes the seasons, for example? That's what they teach us, right? That the tilt of the Earth at 23.4 degrees causes the seasons? Oh. Yeah, Bill Nye kind of says like, that shit. Not pay attention. Oh, that's all right, yeah. It's a good thing. Maybe you could you just get a refresher here, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, you know, so I'd just like to ask people if they could just point out which is the proper size of America here. Well, I would say this one. Okay, the one on the left, right? Yes. Okay, I say the one on your right. Really? Yeah, why not? How do you know? Well, I mean, I feel like we all think it's this big. Uh, right, in America, right? <laughs> but these are both NASA images, okay? So if these are both NASA images, and they also give us all of these, and America is a different size in each one of these, how is that possible? I thought the Earth was just like one size. It's all right. Yeah, that's weird. The reason why they do this is because they know you won't investigate because you're all ignorant and you love the government and you just want to watch baseball and watch Netflix and go to work and pay your taxes. Yeah, I don't want to pay taxes. But maybe. Well, you don't have to. It's not. Wow. So yeah, all of these are just composites. So what they're doing is they're just scanning a flat plane with a high altitude drone, airplane, and high altitude balloon, and then they put it into this, do some Photoshop and copy and paste, and then they tell you that this is where you live in outer space. But you've never been to outer space to see this before, have you? Where are the stars? Yeah, I know, right? That's weird. You gotta go to Hollywood, you gotta zoom in a little bit more, and yeah. you'll see them. <laughs> but yeah, so... But that's the other contradiction, too, is the alleged people who landed on the moon said they didn't see any stars. But the current astronauts who go on the ISS say that they do, and they're everywhere. Huh. So how is that, like, possible? So what's our sun, then? So the first moon landing was fake. I, I can't verify it myself. Right? Can the three of us verify the moon landing? Hmm. I no. Wish we, if we had a pilot or something, maybe, like, an astronaut... Ask him, you know. Yeah, but then you would be appeasing to other people, right? Yeah. Would that be kind of like being in a church where you're appeasing to the priest, and then the church would tell you what's true about the Bible or not? Shit. So that's what they did back in the day is they withheld a lot of information from the people to keep them ignorant so that then people worship government. Huh. And then this is what it's actually looked like, right? Well, I mean, I haven't been high enough to see it in this perspective before. But most of us could probably allegedly draw America with our eyes closed, right? Yeah, yeah, because we're right here. Yeah, so whether this is, you know, where the continents and everything are, in my opinion, just my own personal observations, I observe water to always lay level and flat when it is contained. Yeah. So would we say that the lake behind you is contained by shoreline? Yes. Yeah. So it's round flat, not square flat? Well, it's round like a pizza flat, not round like a sphere because okay, yeah. if you go on amazon.com and you type in round if you write type in round table you're never going to find a spherical table fair enough right yeah well, you'll I mean, always you'll always see shit when you get a spherical what table. about yeah. what's holding the water in then? more shorelines in my opinion mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i've never seen the ice wall the alleged ice wall that other people um have this idea that there is an edge but even flat earthers claim that there's some kind of an edge, and I don't, I haven't seen it. So I just say it goes on infinitely forever, and there's just more shorelines and more water. Could there be more worlds? There could be other land masses that they're withholding from us, because there's a, lo a lot of alleged wa uh, water right here, right? So are they obligated to put more land masses here to tell you where other continents are? I guess not. Some island somewhere, right? Yeah, I mean, so what if there's like another continent right here, which takes a couple of weeks to get to by boat or plane, and it's an ancient civilization, right? 
and then we were just brought over here like a bunch of foundlings, like a bunch of little children, and then we were raised up in what we call America, like some kind of a science experiment 150 years ago, mm -hmm. and we were just raised up in some kind of big psychological experiment where everybody, where they make you believe that you live on a ball of earth, right? Mm -hmm. And then, but before everybody knew that the earth was level flat, even in the 1900s, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. And so they used the moon landing to propagate the idea of outer space. And then the boomer generation, like our parents and our grandparents, you know, saw it on the radio. So they believe it. And now they teach it to everybody. And now that it has been revealed that the earth is a level non-rotating plane. Now people come at me and they say, no, 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 no. It's a ball in outer space. So really what is happening right now is people are having to choose whether they believe government or our creator. Hmm. Interesting. Well, we have to think about that. Huh? Well, I mean, it's a lot to ingest. You guys have a computer at home? I got a mixed tape. It's got some information on it. Cool, YouTube man. channel. And then you just absorb it on your own time. You know, I've been doing this for almost four years. So, so you get it a little stronger than Yeah, I mean, you know, this isn't my first rodeo. You know, first time I went out, I was a little you know, hesitant and didn't know all the answers, you know, the idea of the meniscus, putting a water droplet on a bottle and surface tension and stuff like that, you know, but now I have pretty good answers to everything. I don't know it all, but I can give you an opinion, right? Yeah, yeah. That could contradict what most people would call themselves heliocentric believers, so. Cool, man. Thank Thanks you. a lot for stopping. Yeah, Appreciate no, you. We're excited to read more about it. All right. More, yeah, have a nice day. Bye. I'm sorry. Free, free, free. <laughs> no, you can take it. Yeah, I can do that. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Let's take yeah. a picture of your sign here, not you. Oh, that's all good, man. Yeah. The earth is flat, though. Yeah. The earth is a level, non-rotating plane. I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah. Have a nice day. Yeah. You have two minutes. Yeah. You want a water? Yeah. What? You thirsty, my friend? Hey, you? Yeah, I have treats in there. Oh, treats for you. Yeah. What's his name? This is Odie. Odie. Hi, Odie. How are you? It's good. It's good. He's hot. Yeah, I bet. Hopefully it's like this the next couple of days, huh? Yeah, it's, it's a welcome change for sure. Yeah. It's that global warming. Funny. You know, I have a YouTube channel. You should come by and humor me. Humor yourself, right? Authentic intent. What is it you're doing?
Well, I just um, bring people back to, you know, ground level, right? And have them observe water laying level and flat, right? And so if we understand that water, when it's contained, it will level off at the top and it'll fill the container. How is it then that it can turn into a ball in outer space of which we've never seen before with our own eyes? It's a real thing, you think? Can you demonstrate gravity here? Yeah, do it. And then you're going to drop the bottle, right? Yeah. Um, do you have to pick the water bottle up to then drop it to observe gravity? Because you're the force picking it up, right? And then you're resisting it from falling. And then once you let it go, that's when you observe gravity. But why doesn't it just float in the air? But the only way you can observe gravity is by letting go of the resistant force of a second or third party, right? What if it's a pressure that's pressing it down and not a pulling? Something to think about. Because you can't have two low pressure, you can't have a low pressure system and a high pressure system next to each other without a container, right? Kind of like a soda pop. So a soda pop is a high pressure system, right? And it's contained in an aluminum can. And the only way to make that water or uh, that soda pop depressurize is by tipping the tap, right? And then releasing it. So then the inside of the pop can is at equilibrium with our air temperature, right? Yeah, it's all good, man. Yeah, I, I get it, man. Yeah. How you guys doing? Very good. 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 Thanks for the water. You yes. Is this Thanks for the yeah. See you, Bodie. Brody or Bodie? Bodie. Bodie. Right. I have some treats. Does he want some treats? Uh, no, it's probably too much. Okay, fair enough. Just chilling out, man. Yeah, what's up, guys? How you doing? Hi, good. Right on. Yeah, so you were captivated. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever uh, seen a unicorn out in public before? No. No. So, it, have you ever, like, had a conversation with somebody who thinks the Earth is a level, non-rotating plane that goes on infinitely forever and ever? My aunt. Your aunt? Yeah. Well, what does she have to say? Um, I don't know. I just kind of don't listen to her because hmm. I don't really see her that much. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then when you do see her, you don't really see her because you're not listening well, and paying attention well, to her. Well, no, we don't really talk about that. We just talk about, you know, like, how is your family over there? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Do you typically, like, ignore older people than you because you guys all know it all, right? Yep. Because of, exactly of school? Yeah. Do you think school has kind of turned into a church where you don't really have to observe anything nowadays? You just take the church. School teachers would be, like, pastors. And then scientists would be priests. And then NASA, for example, would be your god. Well, actually, contrary to that, um, one of some of my teachers actually... Um, <laughs> this past year have just like um pressured me to like think by myself and actually just like to not trust the system one of my teachers he actually didn't teach the course at all it was a the government course okay. and he just encouraged us to he basically said go out there like the real world is for you to discover like and to just don't believe anything until you can prove it yeah right kind of yeah. like the 50th anniversary this july 20th with the moon landing, right? Oh, yeah, because it was in 1969. Yeah. So how do the five of us verify the moon landing? Isn't that science? Like, the scientific method is to observe something, right? And yeah. then come up with a hypothesis and then duplicate somebody else's findings, right? Yeah. So if we can't duplicate those the moon landing, how is it that you would believe it then if you can't? Well, I think we could duplicate the moon landing. Okay. Yeah. Because we haven't been back since. Yeah, but what's to say we can't? Because we haven't been back since. Yeah, but just because you haven't done something doesn't mean you can't do it. Because we should spend the money to go back to something that it is going to happen again? Why is it that you feel, no offense, why, do you, why is it that you feel led to defend people that you've never met before? 
I'm just asking. I know you are, and fair enough, right? Yeah. But it just seems like I'm getting just particularly your vibe that you think I'm nuttier than squirrel turds, and now that I've been out of the school system for so long, you are kind of in the church right now, so you would defend your church as if it's like a Mormon. Like, I'm the Mormon, right? And I left the church, and you're trying to, like, call me names as if to, like, get me back into the church again. Have you watched the musical Book of Mormon? I've, I've seen a lot of testimony regarding the Mormonism idea, and it seems like they have some kind of, like, a cultish behavior, as if to, like, say, if you leave the church, even though you're born into it, you get ridiculed, gang-stalked, and called names, even ostracized by family members. Well, I mean, that's kind of interesting, because the Book of Mormon <laughs> musical, you should really check it out. It yeah. would, like, expand your knowledge a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in regards to what? Like, would it, what would it Just do like, for me? Do you, can you give me, like, a Reader's Digest? Uh, no, actually. Oh. No. I, I've, heard, I've heard it, <laughs> though. It's, it's really it's funny. funny. Okay, so you haven't yourself seen the entire no, thing? No, I haven't. Oh. So you're telling me to do something you haven't done yet? Well, I mean, you were just telling me to go to the moon when you haven't done it. So. I can't. I don't have the resources to do it. Well, neither do And I. NASA has the, owns the skies. And you actually need from the FAA a permit to fly a drone higher than a mile and a half. Did you know that? Yeah, because uh, my friend has a drone. Yeah, so if you go any higher, you, you, you're not allowed to go up any higher. So, um, Do you have any, like, uh, questions? Regarding, like, why somebody would think the Earth is flat? Can you just, like, explain it? Like, I've never actually met somebody who believes the Earth is flat. Yeah, fair enough, like, right? I would like to, like, know about it. Okay, I can give you three observations or opinions, right, of why I feel the Earth would be a non-rotating plane, okay? So behind you we have a body of water, for example, okay? Would it be fair enough that we could agree that if we were to dig a hole and we were to have, like, a garden hose and we were to fill that hole up with water, it would fill that hole all the way up to the top and level off at the top if we were to stop it, right? Okay. And so how is it that then if water lays level and flat when contained and not moving, that it all of a sudden conforms to the exterior of a shape like this, like a ball? Wouldn't it be because of gravity? It would be the idea, right? But have you ever seen the Earth from this perspective in outer space before? Just pictures, right? Okay, so does that mean that things are real, though, if you see pictures or images? Okay, depending upon the source, maybe? Sure. Like, if, if, if you were friends and two of you left to go to Thailand, for example, and they took a picture of them being in Thailand, right. you could probably say, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're in Thailand, right? But that would be because you trust them, right? Or you could just look at some now. Well... <laughs> Stop. I know. I know this is really, really difficult for you, um, but just pump the brakes a little bit, okay? It, it's yeah. okay to, like, allow we other new ABS, information to come like in. We have, ABS brakes now, like, anti-lock brakes, so we don't have to pump anymore. Oh. Okay. So well, stop. Fair enough, Sorry. right? No, you're good. So, so if we were to say that water, that, that would be my thing. Right. So if water lays level and flat, then this would be a better projection of the earth on which we live. Because then the ocean would just be a big giant lake, okay. and the continents would just be really big islands. But as humans, we have to use vernacular to differentiate between a pond, a lake, a puddle, and the ocean, right? So what if the continents were just all on the same horizontal plane, and it went on infinitely forever, for example? Okay? Just hypothetical, right? Okay, and so as you get higher in elevation, the horizon will continue to rise with your eye level. And let me see if I can get that picture real quick. So this is at about 20 miles from the surface of the Earth. And this is a horizontal horizon. That's why we call it a horizon, because it's horizontal. So is this more, which is more believable just for you, this image or this image of Felix Bumgarner Red Bull Jump? This one? Okay. Do you know what a GoPro is? Do you know that GoPros are standard to have fisheye lenses in them? So this is curving a horizontal line. So this is not a real picture of Earth from space. Well, like you said earlier, you can't believe all pictures. Right, exactly. So 
I just want you to investigate my claim here of high altitude balloon footage from college students who have launched high altitude rockets and then went up 20 miles. And then this is what, this is the image, imagery that they see. With that picture? Yeah. Like how can you like gauge the curvature if it's just like, like a portion of the picture? Like what if the grander picture of that, what you're seeing there is curved? Yeah, so what if this was to have like a movie, a quote movie to it, and for three minutes it just like floated up there and went around in kind of a circular motion and continued to show a horizontal line? Because you might have you mean like side to side? Yeah, yeah. I'm more like pulling out of the picture. Right, and so we as human beings wouldn't be able to get this high, so we would have to use video footage from what people would consider credible sources like a college or a university. And this is the general consensus of what they get. And so there will be some atmospheric lensing on the edge because of the lens will, con you know, consort. Even my, my phone has a wide angle lens to it. It's going to do that here, just here, right? But always in the center here, you're going to have a horizontal line. And then the third idea would be, have you ever been to the ocean before? Yes. And seen a sunset? Yes. Okay, so the sun, so like you're on the, you're on the ocean, right? And you're seeing the sunset. And then you see the, the, the sun ray come all the way up to your feet, right? Okay, so on a curved ball earth, that sun ray would only come up halfway because water doesn't bend over a curve like that. So the only way that that light from the sun and that sun ray on the water comes up to your feet is because the earth is a plane. And that's where the idea comes from Jesus walking on water. The sun walks on water. Does that make sense? Well, the thing is, the that also begs like the the explanation is like the atmosphere will bend light to make it hit straight. So basically, when the sun's coming, like basically, there's a bunch of like layers of like gas and various stuff out there that will bend the light and twist it in a any way that it can. So it basically. Is that really a credible source for Are you saying a like a prism? No, I'm just saying like a, the ozone layer and cuz do you believe in global warming? No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. I don't think that cows belching or farting could cause a created earth to elevate in temperature by any means. Well, but do you think that like burning fossil fuels and like more humans, yeah, more car emissions would allow because in in the flat earth, is, is it just the flat, basically just, is it just a flat earth and then, like, is there, well, where does the gas go? Where yeah, that that's a great go? question because um, sometimes a lot of people have just like this misconception about what a flat earth would be, if it were, and what a lot of people do is instead of a ball earth floating in space, they think of a disc like this floating. And so there's still outer space. So people would say, well, does the sun go underneath the earth? And again, like back what I was saying, if the earth goes on infinitely forever, how can your consciousness get fast enough to get to the underside of something that goes on infinitely forever, right? And so what a lot of people think is like either there's an ice wall, but it still goes on, you know, enough to where we're just kind of contained in this little area right here. Have you ever seen the TV show on Netflix just came out called The Society? I have. Yeah, and that's interesting because that's flat earth predictive programming. What does that mean? Well, it means that when they leave on the bus, right, and there's like this quote storm and they have to come back to their city, they're, yeah, they're back to their city where they were, but then they have that group of, of students go around the perimeter of it and they're all contained. Okay, but what about like, has anybody ever reached that barrier? I haven't been there, and a lot of flat earthers would say that there is some kind of an edge, like the ice wall, for example, but nobody has ventured out there yet either. That's why I say it's an infinite plane, and it's kind of like, well, prove me wrong, right? In the community that I'm part of, right? How does that apply to like sunsets and sunrises? Yeah, so what the idea would be is like, here's America, okay? And so the sun is, let's even just say 70 miles in diameter. Okay. And all it's doing is it has a relationship with the North Pole and it's an electromagnetic light. So it's just traveling further away from your perspective. So that's what it's doing right now. And it has a convergence point to where it looks like it's like traveling like this, but, but really like it's just traveling further away from you.
Kind of like if you were on, you know, railroad tracks and all of the poles next to you were 20 feet high. Are the poles getting smaller? Right. Technically, yes, but are they all 20 feet tall still? Yes. Okay, right? So, so it's like line of sight thing. Yeah, it's a line of sight thing. And we learn, we learn this in art class, right? Okay. So in like school, yeah. yeah, in school they teach us all this stuff, but we have to, in our mind, put it all together, right? And so really what it's doing right now is it's above us, and it has a relationship with the North Pole, and it's just doing one of these. And as it becomes winter out, it just gets further and further away, so it'll be lower in the horizon. So whether the North Pole is repelling the sun, or it's some kind of an attractor, that's all it's doing. Or else it's going up like this, and it's coming back down like a vortex up I and down. Just because I don't really know much about your community, do you believe yeah. that all the other planets are flat as well? Um, most, uh, all of the flat earth roots would say that there's a firmament above us because that's something that's described in Genesis 1. What's that? It would mean that there's a glass ceiling or a dome firmament above us of which we cannot penetrate through. And that ceiling is probably about 100 miles high or so. Okay. Wait, so do flat earth also believe in the Bible? Um, most are agnostic. Some believe in the Bible. But you will not find, I would probably not any atheists. Most feel like the earth is created by a creator. Now, whether that's a biblical Bible, right, or, or some other type of intelligent designer. What does it say in Genesis 4? Um, it talks about him separating the waters from the waters. So we have the water that we see here, and quote, scientists, take it for what it's worth, right, have just discovered underwater, underground, uh, water reservoirs bigger than the oceans themselves right now. And so then there's some kind of a liquid above us. Now whether that's like liquid hydrogen or whatever, which makes the makes everything look blue to us in our perspective from here. But in my opinion, um, the lights are just some kind of an electromagnetic frequency to them. Like if you were to go to the science museum, for example, and you ever do the resonance yeah. um, experiment where you get the violin yeah. string and you do that, so that's what this particular lights in the sky are. Each light individually has its own resonance. And in my opinion, if those lights were to come through the firmament into our atmosphere and to land on Earth, they would become human in physical form. Interesting. So are we the floor of the universe or are we looking up above and it's like reversed? As above, so below. So, like, is that the floor and we're upside down? So, like, are you saying, like, there's a mirror community, like, above us? Possibly. Okay. What's the center of the universe for you? Um, I... the North Pole? Since the, like, the... Yeah, opposite, or I like, would say, I would say I'm more interested in going to the North Pole if I were to explore and have the type of resources to do so. But a lot of people want to find the edge, right? Because a lot yeah. of flat earthers will say, well, Antarctica is the edge because water has to be contained, right? So that's what's holding all the water in. Have you ever seen the yeah. movie Waterworld yeah. before? No. So yeah. Waterworld is an idea where everything is water, and they just continue to traverse through water forever okay. and ever and ever. What would you say if somebody like took a boat trip and went from, like, let's say they think the world is like round or whatever, and then mm -hmm. they go from here and they end up over here? How would you explain that? So, just taking it for what it's worth, it's never been documented people going north to south like this before. Everybody's always traveled like this. So it's really no different than walking around Lake Calhoun or taking, what, three or four right turns on a block. So leaving California, you go underneath Australia, go underneath Africa, go through the Panama Canal and back to California. That's circumnavigating east to west. Because okay. if you were to use a compass, the compasses always point north and you're always holding them parallel to the ground, right? As if to say, like, compasses would have to go through the Earth's core, however many thousands of miles to get to the North Pole, for well, a compass to work properly. Well, have you seen like the the diagrams of like the magnetic pole, as in like it, like basically it will flow out and then flow back, like it will basically form like a little box around. Yeah. Yep. The Earth, in that sense, like so basically it wouldn't really be going through the Earth, more like the magnetic pole would come from like right here, like a halo around the Earth. Yeah. Fair and, enough. I see where you. I know where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Have, do you happen to know how how deep human beings have drilled into the earth? Actually, I think I do. I think it's like, I'm, I'm not sure, but it was a Russian drill that yep. drilled like maybe 1.6 miles, but I don't know, maybe not that deep. Did Eminem made a movie? Do you remember what movie he made? Oh, 8 Mile. 
Yeah. You guys don't remember that? No. That's actually such a good... That. Yeah. So Russians allegedly, right, drilled into the Earth at eight miles. So to, quote, explain the idea of gravity, what if under eight miles there was a sheet of some kind of uh, electromagnetic properties or whatever, where it, everything comes from the ground and that's why things are just happen to fall to the ground because there's a pressure instead of a pulling of down. So there's just this big plate instead of an Earth's core in the center of this gobstopper that we're told we live on with the different crusts and the different layers and stuff that I've never seen before, right? Yeah. But if I was to take somebody's word for it and, real, and realistically say eight miles probably sounds more realistic than to drill into the center of a Tootsie Pop, which is the radius of your ball Earth is 4,000 miles. So... Well, you keep citing a lot of, like, movies as, like, proof, like, the Netflix show and then the yep. Waterworld show. But, mm -hmm. like, aren't there just as many movies that show examples, if not more movies that Every show Every single one shows you living a ball earth, yeah. But w what Hollywood was created for is psychological warfare. That's why move the Hollywood was created, is to give you an esoteric and exoteric experience. So they're giving you a movie for entertainment purposes... But really what the movie is really about is to deliver a message to those who are in the know to have an understanding of where society is being moved to. Just like the movie I Am Mother. Have you seen that yep. on Netflix? Yeah. Oh, well, that's so, like really dystopian. Yep, it is very. But that would be the idea, for example, let's say the Earth went on infinitely forever just for, you know, hypothetical. And there was this continent where we're here. And it took maybe a month or so to get to. Well, what if this continent people who lived here 200, 300 years ago, and they just brought children from this continent over to America, and they seeded it with children, which are from here, which are human okay. beings like us, okay. nothing fancy, but they're just kind of slowly giving away their technology to us, like yeah. touch screens and drones and stuff like that, okay. and now okay. they're just kind of waiting okay. for them to come to our area, but what they have to do is they have to prime us for a ter certain type of psychological understanding that they're androgynous. So they don't have male or female identities to them. And so that would be an idea of why the trans community is being elevated right now, to get people used to a male and a female in one entity. So are you saying, like, any, like, new sci like societal development is from, like, an outside community and is not of our own? Possibly, yeah. Is that what you believe? Uh, I would lean toward, towards that. It's fun to think about, right? Um, it certainly isn't aliens from outer space. Okay. So you believe in, like, different communities maybe outside this ice barrier mm -hmm. in the infinitesimal plane of Earth, and you potentially believe in a mirror society above, but not aliens? Um, more of a spiritual entities above us. Oh, okay. You know, like fallen angels and stuff like that. You know, like angels being cast out from above. Yeah. Being brought down here. And that's where we get our solar system right here, right? I've never seen the solar system from this perspective before. And I would feel personally like this is kind of prideful to think human beings could see the solar system like God can. But these are wandering stars like your Mars and your Jupiter and various other things. So what if these are entities that would come down and people elevate those lights above as if they're like gods, right? And then if they were to come down, and then people would think like they are entities from outer space, but really they're just probably something from, you know, another society, another continent. Okay. How did you get into like the flat earth community? I, I don't know. I've just been always kind of a seeker of truth. Like even though it might go against the typical worldview of what most feel is like, yeah, go along to get along, right? Like, the general consensus would go along with a certain idea, and I would always be the one to kind of contradict that. So, like, since you were a child, you thought, like, maybe the Earth was flat? No, I just or... came across it like four years ago. Okay. Yeah. But even then, before, I had this image, I, I did actually go to Thailand, nice. and I taught English there in 2014. And before I left, I had a 60-inch... TV and it was connected to my computer and I had this image of the ball earth from outer space. I literally thought this was me looking at earth like God. And having come across flat earth, it has really humbled me in a sense where I don't have the right to see earth like this, like God can.
even if this were real. And to take anybody else's testimony as if to say, this is earth, I would be appeasing to government and saying, you are my God, you tell me what's above me, and then I will appease to you. Does that make sense? Yeah, but what's the difference between believing that and believing this? This is just a projection, and well, just having the under... theoretically just a projection. Well, this is uh, an art piece, right? And to say that this came from this is, in my opinion, more real than saying, like, the, this, the globe is this projection. And like I had started when she had asked me what I think, why would the earth be flat, is water lays level and flat, right? So with that being said, would you take a flat map with you to go camping or would you take a globe to go camping? Well, the reason well, camping is on a small scale. <laughs> right. The the flat the the water thing is something I just don't agree with. Okay. It's because in the it's on such a large scale that if you filled a hole large enough with water, mm -hmm. it would indeed be pulled down into the center of the earth, like the earth the core because that's where all the mass is okay and so basically the basically instead of having the the earth or the water just lay like this it will basically conform to like say the sun or whatever that's the center it will it will like hug close to it because that's where the mass is being pulled yeah fair enough i yeah. see where you're coming from but i don't agree with it right yeah can you demonstrate that here in our reality i mean the the ocean. I know, but like if I was to dump water on my hand, what do you think it would do? Float around the exterior of my hand or fall to the ground? Well, some of the water would stay on your hand because... I know, that's but you know what I'm trying to convey. But it would fall to the ground because that's where the, the Earth's core is. Okay, so how do you demonstrate this ball Earth here in, here in our reality without appeasing to government to tell you that this is where you live? Because this is the only way that you can see water conforming to the exterior of a shape by them telling you that, right? So how do you demonstrate that here? You can't, right? Yeah. So you have to believe them to tell you that, right? Yeah. Okay, so fair enough. So do you think they have measured the ball Earth? Like if you were to Google Earth and yeah. say, hey, you know, Google what's the circumference of the Earth, yeah. what's the radius, and all that jazz? Do you happen to know those measurements I and stuff? Don't. Okay. Are you familiar with like maths? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, do you think that if we were to have the circumference and the radius of the ball Earth, we could come up with an equation to find out what the curvature drop of it is? Yeah. Okay. I have it right here, actually. And so what happens is over a distance from point A water, particularly, because we can manipulate land, right? Have you ever played SimCity before? Uh, I've, <laughs> I've, I've. One of my friends has. Okay, what about Minecraft? Yeah, I yes, played Minecraft. Minecraft is the best game. Yeah. I was actually gonna gonna say that earlier. Yeah, No Man's Sky. No. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. So Fallout. Yep, of course. Fallout New Vegas is one of the best games of all time. Um, but if you were at the tangent point on the top of the ball Earth, right? Yeah. And we were observing an object over a body of water, and we were to travel further away from it, because in your perspective, for example, we are always on the top, right? Yeah. Of the ball Earth. So literally, you would have to believe that people are right now are walking upside down on in Australia, right? Well, yeah, that's, that's the meme. Gravity. That's upside down <laughs> compared to us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, that that's fair but, enough, right? But exactly what you said. How there could be another society living upside down compared to us. It's the same. Idea. Well, no, 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 no. I I don't think that you understand where I was coming from, and maybe I I ex I, I brought your mind to something maybe that you can't understand right yet right now. The ceiling above us goes on horizontally forever also, along with the ground. So it's it, it goes on horizontally parallel to the ground. It doesn't bend or anything like that. It still goes on horizontally forever. So if you're at the top of the tangent point on the ball earth and you're and you're traveling further away from something, right? Or you're observing something travel further away from you, you have to believe that eventually the curvature of the earth causes that to go underneath you, right? No, because I believe that the, the, basically the, um, rel relative to the earth, the surface area is consistent. It's like, it's like a radius type thing. Like, I believe that they're, they're below me if the radius from the center of the earth to the, um, exterior is less, but not if it's the same. Well, if, if, you're, if you two here are on a boat, 
in yeah. the ocean, right? On the ocean. And then these two are traveling further away from you and you see them disappear, right? Yeah. From the bottom up, you would have to believe that they're actually going below you, right? Like this, right? Well, below, well it's relative. That's below, like relative to where you are. Below means to the center of the earth. Yeah, I, see, I know different. what you're saying, but what I'm trying to convey is that over a distance of a hundred miles, we can see things too far over a body of water. And your curvature calculation shows that over a hundred miles, there should be 6,669 feet of curvature drop, which means between point A and point B, you should have bendy water. And you should not be able to see that object anymore because it's below you at your tangent point what on about, the top. What about the theory that the Earth isn't perfectly spherical? Like an oblate spheroid, yeah. right? But all the images that we get of Earth from space are perfect and symmetrical. But we couldn't see if maybe this part protrudes from this angle. But it's it's at such a small degree that even this would look like an oblate spheroid in, in terms of the ball Earth oblate spheroid. It's, it's such a, a small degree. And if the Earth were spinning at a thousand miles an hour at the eclipse or at the equator, then how is it that it would cause that to like extend out? I guess. I mean, why do you think the government wants us to know that wants us to think that it's a circle or a globe? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not there. I'm not them. I don't know their motives, right? Yeah. But would you, if you were to ask mo the majority of the people who walk by here, Say if right. they trust the government, what do you think the majority of people would say? If they're white, yes. If they're black, no. <laughs> Fair enough, right? But uh, I would say, because I've been doing this for a while, the majority of people who I talk to don't trust the government. Right. But they believe them when they tell them where they live. And I'm just saying, well, what if there is another agenda, whether it be hiding more land, okay, they could be hiding a creator, because a lot of people who have the idea and concept of them living on a ball earth believe in evolution, right? Because it takes a certain amount of time for it to get to this point in the first place, right? Because yeah. of gravity and everything like that, right? Or it could be uh, an alien invasion that they're priming us up for, like I was saying earlier. So is your, like, what would you call it? Is this like a religion, a community, just like belief? Society. Or is it like... No, not a society at all. Would and the society, the Flat Earth Society is most likely NASA. It's called Controlled Opposition. So that's why I have to sometimes confirm that it's not a disk floating in outer space going gradually upwards at 9.8 meters per second squared to create the idea of gravity. That's what the Flat Earth Society says. No Flat Earther agrees with the Flat Earth Society. So So are you guys like a generally skeptical community of like most like, things? I can only speak for myself, right? And my particular speak resonates with some, some Flat Earthers, you know? Um, I could carry on for hours and hours if there's something to talk about and most people would, you know, listen. Whereas other people who are in the flat earth community don't have a particular way to communicate and it can be difficult for other people to kind of resonate with that kind of conversation. So, so like you guys all hold some general ideas, but, but like you're not all confined to like a typical belief, like say people, Christians in the Bible. Yeah, right, right, right. There's, there so are just, like people... ideas and concepts that you like take and yeah, so I, I, I'm pretty firm um, as I have progressed through talking about this in public. I'm one of the very few people that does this out in public. Most people stay online, do memes on Facebook right. and stuff like that, um, where I would say it goes on infinitely forever. But most, I would say the majority of people think that there is an ice wall and there's a dome over us, like Stephen King's TV show, Under the Dome. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? I haven't seen it, but I know it. Yeah, so that's more flat earth predictive programming. Um, even the first episode of that uh, space TV show that just was re-released, re um, I can't remember what it's called, but uh, Game of Thrones has an ice wall. Okay. Um, so there's... Ice Age. Yeah, so there's a lot of like different... Um, Godzilla. Godzilla allegedly came from Antarctica, which is an ice wall in that movie, Godzilla 2. So is this near like Antarctica, whereas like a... A globe, it would be con like a confined mass of ice. It's yes. just like spread out on a wall. Mm -hmm. Right. Have you? Are you familiar with what dumbs are? Yeah. Deep underground military bases? No. So there's an idea of deep underground military bases that may or may not be out here in this outer perimeter 
where, you know, yes, if the sun isn't close nearby, things will get cold, right, for example? So if they were to have deep underground military bases out here in Antarctica, then human beings might be able to survive, much like that movie I Am Mother, where they're just basically starting a human race in an underground military base. Right? Why, why, what's like the goal of that? In regards to what like, do you mean? Why would, why would the government do that? Um, like, I, why would you believe that the government is out there doing that? Um, it's fascinating talk to hear that they do certain things outside of the realm of human capabilities and logical thinking that the government would do. But I ask, have you ever, like, read or watched the Harry Potter movies? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you say that's like, but you don't believe in wizards, right? Uh, there's, I do, I do, you know what spellcasting is? Like witchcraft? Yep. Like speaking, a particular talk, a particular speak, that's why they call it spelling. You're spellcasting. Yeah, but like, you wouldn't believe in Hogwarts, would you? Uh, I believe that there is a type of that out there, yes. Mm hmm Where? Have you ever seen the movie The Skulls? No. With Can Matt you say Damon? it without referencing the movie? I'm just saying, man, they put a lot of this stuff out there in movies. It's just really well, bizarre. Well, if you but say like, that, that the, Hollywood yeah. portrays that stuff so that you won't believe it, then why would they put it all in movies? Oh, well, it's called discernment, you know? And if you're in the game long enough, you know, then you have some type of a resonance to where you can tell what is entertainment and what is not entertainment and what is a message that they're trying to deliver to themselves and then what a message they're trying to deliver to the general yeah. public. Why can't they just hold a press conference instead of releasing a whole movie about it? Because people are scared and they need things gradually given to them over a period of time and to then all of a sudden just display an alien invasion would probably call cause immense panic. So and whatnot. Are you saying you're like aware enough to discern the hidden messages in Hollywood movies? I am just as capable of being deceived as you are. I'm and just so as why naive. Do you, think that, you know. How do you know that you're not being deceived by the flatter? Um, as I continue to talk about it out loud and speak about it with other people, I'm not convicted about it. Does that make sense? I guess. Like, yeah. if you if you speak something openly to somebody else, sometimes like you'll get convicted about something and probably won't ever say that again. But as I have continued to develop this thought life and observing water laying level and flat, the more I feel in my heart when water's contained and it finds its level at the top, it levels off. And so to think that gravity would conform to the exterior to make water conform to the exterior of a shape, that makes me feel really, really uncomfortable. Just for me, you know, how I feel about it. Well, say, wouldn't there be someone else who, basically, in your shoes as the opposite, who's super uncomfortable talking with Flat Earth? Oh, They've yeah. They've never been convicted of mm -hmm. uh, defending the round Earth. What makes them more wrong or less wrong? Or why why should someone believe them instead of you or you instead of them? Um, I think it's just a gradual testimony of me conveying this message to people, which I have, you know... I don't know if you guys ever go on YouTubes, but I have a YouTube channel, you know, and I encourage you to check Will it out. You Is it your personal one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will you subscribe to us? Phone Squad Vlogs. <laughs> yeah, do it. What's your... I um, got a shout out. You want to do a shout out? Yeah. What's your personal opinion on afterlife? Um, I think our soul and spirit go on infinitely forever. Our physical body dies. So like a reincarnation idea? No, we do not get reincarnated. Okay. Can we do a shout out? Of course you can. Yeah, do a shout out. How do we right here? Out? Yeah, right here on the camera. Hey guys, okay. it's phone number three. Uh, phone number one, go subscribe to uh, Bone Ad Squad Vlogs. Yeah, Bone Squad Vlogs. No, make vlogs. Him. Yeah, um, so basically we have another friend, he's Indian, and he's not with us because what? he's in Chicago. But you want to see us, we play yeah, trombone cool. and baritone and euphonium in the marching band. <laughs> so if you want to see marching band vlogs, just be sure to hit us up. You know, we know you love it. Uh, we usually keep it clean. Well, right on, man. Yeah, cool. Thanks, do you guys do like some uh, ad lib type anything. stuff, or do you guys typically do other people's stuff, or like how do you guys go about your you musical? Oh, we usually um, so we play in a lot of ensembles. Um, so usually it's like reading the music they give to us. But a lot of years, or with marching band, it's march moving and playing. Okay. So yeah. we'll have music that. created specifically for our ensemble. Okay, you they like the marching band. So basically, okay, some. Some some uh, composer will create music solely for us to play. Okay, cool. And then it'll be super cool. But a lot okay, of times there's 
comes in jazz or stuff where you just make up your own music on the fly. Hey, right on, man. Yeah, Yeah, 99% of the music that I listen to now that I've gotten older is all non-vocal. So I listen to, like, um, just different kinds of, you know, things that resonate with me personally. And I have a Spotify playlist that I put up on the description section of my video sometimes that you can check out. It's got like 400 songs to it. Oh, wow. It's pretty fun. What? Um, but I do ask people who are interested okay. in music this question. Um, do you have anybody that plays like the violin or at all? Yeah. yeah I okay. So I ask this question because I see where automation is starting to, to go. D- do you think music sounds better made by a human with a tree that's been there for, you know, 50 years or whatever, and then they cut it down and then they turn it into a violin? Or do you think music sounds good, automated, made by a robot in a factory, and then they have like hundreds of trees and they cut all those trees down? Both. Both? I think music sounds good when it sounds good. Okay. (laughs) Well, I I think like by um, like a synthesizer, Mm -hmm. like basically if it's trying to emulate like an actual instrument, it won't do a good good job or good job, but if it's just like... (laughs) So, you're really good, funny. man. But, I've been uh, there. But basically, um, there's like a lot of just like really good songs with just like a bass line or like just a synth beat that's just a note. It's like like kind of emulating a piano, but in a more distorted way. I don't really see that as like bad. I just say it's not the same as the mu- It's not the same music as like say a trombone or a trumpet or a violin mm-hmm. play. Is it where your intent is with that music? Because I hear I listen to some electronic type music, yeah. right? And to me, it resonates with me, but I bring it to a certain level in my heart where you could also listen to the music that's coming out on mainstream right now, you know, like all the various channels. And I don't even know what's out there right now, to be honest. But to me, it doesn't resonate with me anymore because I do feel like it's it has a different spirit behind it. And I know that might sound different right now, but... I don't feel like the music that's coming out right now has a proper intent. Well, it's consumerism. You know, yeah, 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 that's what I mean. Like, you can feel the music that's coming out now is more based on money right. and right. and popularity and, like, getting people to, like, do, in my opinion, immoral things mm-hmm. right. than, you know, music that was made probably even in the 90s, you know, than what it is now. Do you guys you feel the same way, right? Do you feel like yeah. that? Well, I think that society's just gotten a lot more constricted, whereas in the 90s it was more like, you know, free, like, you know, do what you want. Mm -hmm. But now it's just more like a, more of a, there's more of a path where you gotta, you know, do this, do that, make ends meet. Yeah. Do you think, and I don't mean to take up too much of your time, but do you think, like, some of the artists that come out now are talented? Or do you think that they have just really good, um... I guess, like, stage appearance to them? Oh. Okay. I think, I think a lot of artists are... <laughs> I think that music class is just completely original, and it is what it is. Like, it's completely human-made, and mm. it's real, and it's what it is, and they're talented people. Yeah. I, I think, think that today, a... you can cheat the system and be talented. Right, and then use auto-tunes, and right. then, mm-hmm. and then like, Ashley O. Oh, did you see the Ashley O. Black Mirror episode? It. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. So, that's really interesting, because how they're turning artificial intelligence into recreating the human voice and people nowadays aren't able to discern between the two so it's more like they think like something is real but then when you show them that it's actually created by an ai they're like wow i didn't even notice that but it's easier to deceive somebody than to convince them that they're being deceived so so my question is why doesn't the flat earth society disappear (laughs) the community the the commonwealth of flat earth Yeah. yeah Just try and deceive everyone into thinking that it's um, a uh, flat earth when, if, if it is in fact the truth. Well, I don't want to deceive anybody. Well, you know, but I would you rather really be, be deceiving anyone if it's the truth. Well, I would rather have people get both sides of the story. Like, people believe this, right? But also, I want to introduce them to a new idea and then meditate on it for however many weeks or months that takes and then roll with it and then just differentiate in your own personal heart whether you want to choose to believe that or not or whether it's important to you or not right and that's only what i can do is i only can convey how it's important to me 
by coming out here when it's beautiful like it is outside today and rather doing this than sitting at home watching movies, playing video games and such. I got two questions. Yeah, what's up? One, do you play Pokemon Go? I don't know. Okay. I'm Second familiar question. with the augmented reality though. I, I find that all interesting. Second question. Yeah, yeah I have one. Shiny? Yeah. What'd you get there? I have like three. I got four shots. What's your second question? Yeah. Okay, my second question mm -hmm. is do people ever get like weirded out when you tell them that you are a flat earther or like say like you're trying to like go somewhere or like and you just like say someone's trying to get to know you and then you're like, Oh yeah, this is like some stuff about me. Do you like say it right away or do you wait no, for it to sink in or and why do you feel like you don't need to share that? Um, I guess it depends, right? I like to wear this shirt. This is fun to it's wear, you know, around. And people are like, hey, I like your shirt. And then I hand them my card. And I'm like, ha ha, Trojan horse. I'm a flat earther, you know, because that's fun, right? Because <laughs> then they think like I'm a, you know, they just think like this is the globe. And then they want, they think that like, this is the globe, right? But then I tell Who's them that. You say the earth is in shape like a man's shirt. It could be. I mean, fair enough, right? But if a female was wearing it, what if it was a female's? Well, then right? the earth wouldn't be around. <laughs> yeah, so, right? Yeah. So. Oh my god. <laughs> so, oh my god. fair enough, man. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Yeah. yeah. Sure so, do you guys want any um, interesting stickers? Those are really cool stickers. Yeah. You want to check one out? <laughs> oh, can I have the Taco Bell one? Of course. Yeah. Yo. Show it to the camera. Those are fun. Flatter Taco Bell. I came across a guy came by earlier and said he worked at Taco Bell. I should have handed him that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think my friend Ryan has some. Uh, Ryan. Is that a little what? <laughs> <laughs> I think my friend Ryan has. Oh, I'm getting this for, for Nick. What is it? Let me see it. Jet fuel hook. So you what know that? the Can jet fuel hook? No. Yeah. So allegedly, airplanes only have enough fuel in them to take off and land. Otherwise, when yeah. they're up in the air, they use compressed air. What do you think about that? What does that mean? Like, I don't that know means, enough about airplanes. That means, though. like, airplane, like, commercial airliners. Yeah, so commercial airliners allegedly have all their fuel in the wings. Yep. Okay? But if you were to allegedly observe the wings and the weight of how all that fuel would be, it would completely collapse the wings. Why? Hypothetically, Why? that's the idea. <laughs> because it takes so many hundreds of gallons of air jet fuel to fly from LAX to Tokyo, Japan. Okay. So instead of that, the idea would be there's only enough fuel in airplanes to take off, and then once they're in the air, they switch it to some kind of uh, air co compressed air, where that's what it's using to propel itself across, and that's inside the fuselage, so that you have like these giant compressed air things, you know, like going to Walmart and getting your right. balloon filled up with helium, right? So then they only have enough fuel to take off and then to land. What it so wait, which one do you believe? I, I'm, I don't care. I like look into this stuff. Wait, how is it relevant? I'm confused. No, because he saw the jet fuel hoax thing. Um, well, it's relevant in terms of like flying from one point to another on a flat plane. Because people would say, well, how do you fly from such and such to such and such? And the, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, right? So between here and here, you know, that's just a straight line and then you go back, right? But that's just like Mandela effect, um, like 5G chemtrails and stuff like that. I've been into all of these other, quote, conspiracy ideas, but I always come back to Flat Earth because it's about creation. It's about where we are, who we yeah, come so from, what do you and think, who created like, us. Yeah, so how did we get here? Um, well, I, I kind of believe the Bible narrative of the first three chapters in Genesis. What about the rest of the Bible? Um, some of it you have to use discernment to know what a parable is. But something is a story, and when something that is real, that happens. So, you know, then you have to just use the Holy Spirit and just discern. So are you saying that you're, like, kind of a Christian? No, I, I, I'm born again. Like, I, so you're saying you are? Yeah. But I, can only t I can only dis display that, right? Right. Through my testimony. Somebody it, would have to see that in my life. So, like, what about the concept of, like... You can't just believe parts of the Bible. Like, it's like, all or nothing. Like, yeah, that's fair enough to you say. Shouldn't add to it. You shouldn't take away from it. Yeah, and that's hard. It's, that's difficult to have an understanding of, right? The part of the Bible um, but the literal part of creation, six days, right? 
I do believe that. Yeah. What, do you believe in Jesus? I believe God manifested himself as a man, yeah, and lived a perfect life. And that's another thing that's kind of like in this truther community, is Jesus is in his real name, right? Yahusha and Yahushai and all this other different names. But I have only found that there is only power in the name of Jesus Christ, just for me. Like testing that out, and that's how you can only do things, is you have to test things, test the spirit, to find out whether things are true or not over a period of time. So what's your like faith story? Um, well, I just got a Bible track in the mail when I was in 2006, when I was 24, 24-ish, and then so I believed from there, and then for the last 12 or 13 years I've been walking with God, trial and error, right? having to experience ups and having to experience down, but he's always been faithful to me to provide in the very last ends of when I need something. So do you like read the Bible? Um, yeah, I usually read Proverbs though. Just ever Proverbs? Read? No, but have you ever read Proverbs before? Some of it, yeah, yeah. I'm working through it. I think Proverbs is probably a, one of the better books that could be generalized for most people. Like if you were just to give them the book of Proverbs and not say it was from the Bible, even a Buddhist could so read it. So they like, they're like life lessons and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Ecclesiastes and stuff. And really, like, you experience God through your own experiences in life. Okay. I don't, you don't necessarily need the Bible to, you know, save you or anything. So, it's just, you know, a book. And I think that most Christians, like, worship the Bible and say, like, oh, the Bible is everything. When really, like, you need to experience God through your own experiences and trial and So what's and your, like, experience? Um, he's been faithful to me. I'm still alive. You know? I'm where I'm at right now, you know, all because of him. So, and people can see me through my testimony online, at least, of what I do here. And then if it doesn't, con if it conflicts with what I do behind closed doors, then I think that it would resonate to people through my actions here out in public. Do you have a job? So, yeah, I walk dogs in the neighborhood here, actually. Yeah. So yeah. So just to see all the dogs and stuff is fun. Plus, like, you know, it just is so, like, peaceful to, like, hang out with animals and stuff, you know, rather than working around people all the time. Because yeah. then you don't want to let people down. You don't expect things from other people. Can't expect a whole lot from dogs. And they're so needy. You and expect them to take the dog. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> clean up after them and everything. Like, I saw some people earlier throwing things at these go geese, gooses, geese. you know? <laughs> and um, I had to kind of, you know, bat them on the hand a little bit and tell them, what are you throwing things at animals for? Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? Like, that's creating, like, such negative vibration in the air, like, to, like, like yeah, throwing stuff at animals. I mean, give me a break. Yeah, so did you, you grab the card and everything? You guys want a water? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, do it. You know, it'll just be less that I have to carry back to my car. So. Yeah, well, yeah. You guys got any plans for the fourth? We're going to my cabin. Boat. Okay, cabin, boat. Hopefully it doesn't rain for you. What do you right. plan on doing? Going to his cabin. Going to his cabin. <laughs> right on. PG, right? Of course. Yeah, don't worry. I'm safe. All right. PG stuff. Cool beans. Yeah. Well, if I see you around again, you know, if you have any other questions. Hey, What's your name? Joshua. Yeah. Yeah, nice to you. Do you ever go by that? No. I, I think when I um, fo started following Christ, I changed my name to Joshua. Just sounds more mature, I guess, personal. To each their own, huh? So, do you believe in birds? Do, do I believe in birds? <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't see me. Do you, do you believe that I was a child once? Yeah. You didn't yes. see me as a child before, then. Well, I saw myself as a child. <laughs> and you are a human being. I, I saw Chris as being. a child. Stop. Stop. So what were you going to say? <laughs> no, but like, you know, how, you know the theory that the birds are, like, the government watching, right? No, I heard that about cats. What? Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Well, since when? <laughs> okay, I can create that one. Yeah, so, so, like, no joke, a couple of years ago when I first got into this, yeah. um, it was top ten conspiracy theories on the internet. And it had all these different things, and the number one was cats. Cats were just introduced and yada yada, and they're actually aliens from outer space. You can't actually, find that. You, you can't Captain find that video <laughs> have you seen on Captain YouTube. Marvel? Yeah, seen yeah, I have. Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know Captain Marvel actually originally started out as a man? 
Oh, oh the yeah, original Tom Hick is a man. Yeah. Just saying, I am mother, you know, they are something just to, I'm not saying it's a conspiracy or anything. I'm just saying, like, they are pushing the feminine more. <laughs> Alexa, Siri. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness, right? Yeah. No, he literally references so many movies. He's exactly yeah, there's... Like Sean Spencer. Have you seen Psych? Psych? Psych, like show. the show. No. Show. no. It's What's it good, about? It's a good show. It's about, it's, it's about yeah, like, um, have you ever seen Sherlock? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that, but like, uh, uh, yeah, it's like a comedy. So basically the guy's super smart and observant, but instead of like telling everyone he is, he pretends that he's a psychic. He tells he, everyone. He's yeah, he's he tells he's everyone he can like... He can, like, know, like, what they did or, like, know stuff about them, but just because he's, like, hyper-observant, he can be like, oh, I see you play Eden Prairie football. Like, oh, okay, right, right. And, he's, like, and the people are like, whoa! Yeah, and yeah. people are, like, super impressed. And then he basically <laughs> fools, like, the police department into thinking he's a psychic. And only, like, three people know he's not. And then he yes. opens his own private psychic detective business. Okay, yeah, yeah fair enough. Have you seen Brightburn yet? Yeah, it just came out. I've heard of it, though. Yeah, so it's like this new movie of an alleged, like, it's almost set up, like, exactly like Superman, where these people adopt this child that they find in the and middle of nowhere, trailer. and he ends up turning out to be evil, right? So, back to, like, my whole civilization <laughs> idea. The whole civilization idea could be, possibly in the future, something appears as an individual, and does different wanders and different things for the human race, and they would elevate this thing up to godlike, and worship it, which would, would then say, be like, just Jesus is one of those characters. Um, he well he manifested himself as God, right? So he understood how to walk on water, because he understood the ether and everything, right? So are you familiar with what five G is? No. That's coming out. Yeah. So. 5G is just, um, oh my, oh. Sorry, that's still on. um, and so 5G is like, um, new, uh, internet, so you'll be able to download things almost like instantly, right? So the idea would be if, if a, another race of people were to come by and they just understood magnetics, and so 5G would be the repelling. They could amplify 5G towers because they have to be within a few hundred feet of each other because they're called millimeter waves. And so you would be able to make things hover as if like magnetic properties. And so it would be like the spaceship would come in and it would just be hovering across all the 5G uh, towers. And so if, if most people were to see a ship, like on Independence Day, for example, show up out of nowhere, then they would think it would be aliens from outer space. But what if it was just another civilization understanding the ether and the magnetics of the air and having an understanding of magnetic properties? Wouldn't that still be the same concept, though? Like, does it matter where they come from? They're still, like, a foreign being? Well, yeah, they would be, and they would look human, but people would say, oh, it's anti-gravity, right? Okay. So instead of just having an understanding of, like, magnetic properties and gravity not necessarily being the idea that goes along with that to carry that idea it would just be you know something different than just using the technology that we already have right because if you were to take a touch screen back 20 30 years ago people would be like whoa like you're a magic yeah. man you know but really it's just like 50 year technology that's just you're not so familiar like with. like the concept of just like more developed society is just out there yeah 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 okay right yeah I guess that's all I got. I don't know if you... Yeah, yeah what's no. up, man? You think, you think all the other planets are flat as well? Yeah. Listen, I wasn't here. Alexa, what I just, is that? I haven't, I haven't been to them. Okay. Okay. I, have you been to them? Where? Have you, have you been to, like, Jupiter and stuff? I actually don't find information. Okay, yeah, fair enough. But I haven't, right? And so if I was to take, you know, like, if you kind of understand where I'm coming from, in my opinion, these are Bible scriptures, okay? So when you go to school, you read about, ooh, Jupiter, yeah, pictures of Jupiter. But I've never seen these before. And so if I believe that Jupiter is a real place to go to, and I can't go there myself to verify it, I'm appeasing to government, which would be then my God, to tell me what's above 
and then I wouldn't be able to go there, so I have to read books about these fantastical Narnia places. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if, if, if the Earth were flat, right, let, let's say we play pool. Have you ever played pool before? Okay, so you play pool on a level flat plane, right, and all the balls are spheres, <laughs> but does that necessarily mean that what you're playing on is a sphere? Does it have to be a sphere for the spheres to be up above and the ball has to be a sphere? Yeah. Is that lo that's logical for most, right? But the, the objects in the sky don't have, don't have to be flat or anything for us to still be a level, non-rotating plane. Why us, though? We're really that special. And we're creative. You know? Well, weren't the other planets created? Like yeah, everything is creative. Yeah. That would be the idea, right? You should have came here 30 minutes ago. Yeah, what the heck? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Hey, you know what you could do? You know what you could do? You could, you could go to my YouTube channel. Hey, you can watch it. You can watch it in a couple of weeks because it'll be on the YouTube channel. Oh, cool. Yeah. So. You take some. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Right. Don't take too many. Yeah. Save some for others. Right? Yeah. Hey, Ryan, like a water pocket. All right. Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for stopping and being good listeners. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye. Yeah. How you doing, man? You know? Pretty well. How about yourself? You want water? Yeah, Go ahead. Is it cold? No, it's not cold. But you can have one. No, you don't have to buy it. Yeah, I do. Do you want one for your friend? Yeah. 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 Go ahead. What up? Do you have it? No worries, man. Have a nice day. Bye. Hey. Hey, little guys.